Hello and welcome to another physics video as we make our way through Young and Friedman's University Physics. We're in chapter 19, which is the chapter on the first law of thermodynamics, which relates to the fact that energy cannot be uh, created or destroyed. There's a conservation of energy after, before and after a process. Um, I want to do two sections in this video because they're both pretty short and they're both pretty simple. You don't even need this video, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so I want to start with the fifth section, which is on kinds of thermodynamic processes. So these are just basically getting some definitions and the basic nature of these processes out there. And then some of them we're going to uh, talk about later. So for example, there are adiabatic uh, processes. An adi adiabatic process is one in which there's no heat coming in or out of the system, which basically means that Q is zero. Um, now, since the change in internal energy, U, equals Q minus W, if Q equals zero, then the change in internal energy is just going to be negative of the, of minus W. Um, and so we've just taken the Q out because Q is zero. And so that's an adiabatic process, one in which heat doesn't come in or out, kind of like the way we are in Western New York under uh, COVID-19. Nobody goes in or out. I suppose I could go out. But Anyway, not too far, ideally. But um, so delta U equals minus W. Um, now, if there is an increase in internal energy, um, even though no heat is coming in and out, if there's a change in internal energy, there will often be a change in the temperature uh, inside the, the system. Um, so a change in internal energy in this case often means a change in internal temperature. Okay, even though, uh, so. And the change in internal energy is going to equal the negative of the work done. When work is done uh, on the surroundings of a system, it's negative work. If work is done on the system by the surroundings, then it's positive work. Okay, adiabatic processes. More to come on adiabatic processes. Isochoric. Now, iso means same. There, there are three isos here. Isobaric, isothermic. Thermo, I can, I mean, I, I feel the heat. Uh, barometric pressure, I feel the pressure. And so basically isochoric is the one that isn't the other two and it's same volume. It's a process that takes place at the same volume. Well, this kind of uh, work that's done uh, on the environment or on the system tends to involve a change in volume. And so a, for a isochoric um, situation, work, since there's no change in volume, work is zero. And so the, in, if, the, if the Q fell out of this equation, delta U equals Q minus W, the W falls out of this equation. So the W is zero, and so we're left with the change in internal energy equaling the, um, the change in heat, basically, the heat that's added or taken out of, of the system. Uh, so isochoric a process that takes place at the same volume. Again, isobaric, I remember this because iso means same, um, and barometric pressure. Um, okay, iso, an isosceles triangle, um, the sides are the same uh, length, iso, same. Okay, so uh, at the same pressure. Now, with an isobaric pro uh, process, you're gonna have change in, probably gonna have a change in work and a change in heat. Um, and so, um, we can't really come up with a nice little easy equation like that. But we can say, and we've seen this in previous sections of this chapter, that the work done equals the pressure, constant pressure, times volume two minus volume one. So this equation applies in an isobaric situation. And then isothermic is a process that takes place at the same temperature. So the temperatures are the same. In this case, it may very well be the case that the heat and the work will equal each other in quantity so that there is no real change in internal um, um, energy. Uh, maybe, maybe, could be, could be. Okay, so isothermic. All right, so the rest of that section has to do with PV diagrams. Remember that the P is the uh, vertical and the V, the volume, is the horizontal. And so there are some terms here that are very predictable. So an adiabat is a, um, a curve that relates to an adiabatic process. 
surprise, um, an isochore is the path of an isochoric process. So if you have a constant volume uh, process, then you're going to have an isochore. Uh, now on a PV diagram, since, since volume um, is the, the kind of horizontal, the X axis, then an isochore is going to be, uh, sorry, 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 an isochore is gonna be up and down. An isochore is gonna be up and down because it's gonna be at the same volume um, and there's gonna be no work done because there's no area under the curve. So an isochore is vertical. An isobar, because pressure is uh, the vertical, at a constant uh, pressure, you're gonna have a horizontal line for an isobar and you're gonna have work done as the area under, under the curve. Then finally, we've already seen an isotherm in previous sections. Uh, isotherm is the path of a constant temperature process and it's gonna be curved. So the adiabat and the isotherm are both going to be curved, um, curvy kind of thing. So adiabatic process, no heat comes in or out. Isochore, volume stays the same, vertical. Isobar, pressure stays the same, horizontal. Isotherm, a constant temperature process. And that is section five. But I'm gonna go ahead and slip in section six here because it's, it's just basically one page in Young and Friedman. And there's basically one point, and that is that for an ideal gas, the internal energy only depends on the change in temperature or only depends on the temperature. Um, um, not even the change, it depends on the temperature. So the pressure, the volume is irrelevant uh, for, for determining the internal energy uh, of an ideal gas, only the temperature. Um, this wasn't necessarily predicted uh, mathematically or, or formulaically, uh, but it has been demonstrated experimentally. So experiment after experiment after experiment has demonstrated that the internal energy of an ideal gas only depends on the temperature. Um, uh, and if you have a free expansion of an ideal gas, and they keep using the idea of a like a, a, a glass or par partition, breakable partition, where it can it can immediately expand uh, freely into the rest of the space, um, the temperature will remain constant during um, that kind of a free expansion. If we're dealing with an ideal gas, now uh, when you're dealing with a non-ideal gas, you have this intermolecular attractive forces, and so if, if, if a non-ideal gas uh, expands, uh, the uh, kinetic energy goes down and the potential energy goes up. And so the temperature will tend to decrease uh, upon expansion uh, for non-ideal gas. But the purpose of this section is that for an ideal gas, the internal energy depends only on the temperature. So we did two sections, 19.5 and 6. And we are making our way uh, through, um, we're almost done with Young and Friedman's chapter 19 on the first law of thermodynamics.